whole bunch of Bitcoin starts off what is going to be the biggest trading week of this year. Negative, down 3.4%. We covered off last night how the bears took control, rejected us from the 200-week moving average. And now we head into the most important week with the bears in control. What are the key levels in the charts? What do we need to watch out for this week? We're going to cover all of that off and more. As always, don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe. And as you can see here on Bitcoin, we were monitoring this head and shoulders pattern, which broke to the downside. We got the retest at the important level at the top of the channel. We tried to run back high. We created a lower high, so we stayed in a downtrend and we've gone and posted our lower low. So I'm going to show you this shortly in another kind of perspective. But for here on the four hourly chart, you can see here we're hovering precariously either we're going to bounce here and get a nice move to the upside or we're going to head back into this channel which then brings into play those lower price targets which is not what we want to see now, what are the key catalysts this week? We've got some really big catalysts coming up. The first being the FOMC meeting. They will sit down from tomorrow, that's Tuesday, and come to a decision on Wednesday for what rate hike are we going to see this month. As you can see, the market has now priced in, 80% of the market has priced in 75 basis points. This has now creeped up a little bit. This was 70%. It's now creeped up to 80%, which means the market is pretty much saying Jerome Powell hasn't got the cones. He's not going to do a full 100 basis points. He's not going to rip the Band-Aid off. And they're setting their uh, eyes on the fact that he will just do 75 basis points. Now, 20% of the market is pricing the fact that he will do 100 basis points. So if we see 75 basis points, my expectation would be that the market will be uh, horizontal slash maybe have a small relief rally. Uh, happy that Jerome Powell didn't pull the Band-Aid. Now, there could be an adverse situation where they may get annoyed because if Jerome Powell comes out and only does 75 basis points, which they priced in, and we get a bad GDP figure, which I'm going to come on to shortly as well, the market could actually uh, start falling. They could be like, hang on a second, Jerome Powell's not fixing this issue. He's going to drive us uh, into problems and inflation is not going to come under control. So maybe the market has a bit of a perverse way of kind of dealing with that. Now, if we do see 100 basis points, we can see some red in the market because it's not priced in, okay? That's really important. That's going to be the surprise one if Jerome Powell comes in with 100 basis points. Now, it's very important it's not just about the reading and the interest rate hike. It's also going to be the comments as well. So we'll probably live stream that. That's what we normally do for the FOMC meeting. So make sure you've hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. Um, because it's going to be about what does he say in the comments? Does he come across very hawkish? Does he come across aggressive? Does he give us clues of what the next rate hike is going to be? Because remember, the market works on pricing stuff in. So it's already priced in 75 basis points. So we'll just need to react to if there's any difference. Then if he says, oh, there's going to be another 75 basis point, or if we're going to have a pause next month, the market could either fall or rally based on that. So we need to listen to him closely on that data as well. Remember, inflation continues to be at record highs, 9.1%, and Biden's going to be under pressure uh, politically and obviously from the rest of the country to resolve this issue, right? To bring this down. Remember, uh, Jerome Powell does not work uh, for the stock market or the crypto market, right? He works to bring down inflation uh, for the wider population. Then on Thursday, the 28th, we will then hear about our GDP figure. Now, why is this so important? Well, the GDP figure is important because if we get another negative quarter officially, we had 1.6 in Q1, negative 1.6. We have another negative quarter. We officially will be defined as being in a recession. Now, some interesting things have come out where the White House has leaked a few comments here. And almost they're saying, oh, we're trying to change the definition of what a recession is. And now they're really getting into the semantics of it and saying, oh, yeah, but the labor market needs to soften for us to officially be in a recession. So maybe they've already seen the data and maybe they know it's already going to come in negative. So it's a bit of a clue there. Now, you, there's two forecasts you could look at. One is the data from the St. Louis Fed. Now, they tend to be very dovish, right? They tend to overestimate. So they've, they're they saying that Q2 actually saw 4% growth in GDP. That's their projection. And then the other one that people look at is the GDP now from the Atlanta Fed. And that's coming in at a bit more of a sensible estimate of saying we're going to be at about minus 1.5 to 1.6 kind of range here. So that is what we're looking out for. Really important data coming out. Not to forget, we also have huge, huge earnings this week. I mean, from Tuesday, you've got UPS, Coca-Cola, Alphabet, Microsoft, Visa, McDonald's, McDonald's. Going into Wednesday, you've got Meta, you've got Boeing, you've then on Thursday, at the same time as the GDP data, you're getting Apple, you're getting Amazon, you're getting Roku and Intel, some big players announcing earnings this week. And again, it's not just about the earnings they provide. It's also about what projections they give for the next quarter. This is really important. The markets want to look ahead. Okay, So what do they say in the earnings calls? What are they saying in terms of 
supply and demand is it softening is it looking strong how much purchasing power do they have what's happening to margins these things are all important to see if we turn risk on or risk off okay so that's what we're looking for this week big big week coming up now by the way guys OKX links in description. They are not sponsoring this video, but I have to show you this feature because this is something I was waiting for for a long time. The link in the description is an affiliate link which you can use and it does support the channel and supports you, but they are not paying me to show you this. The reason I'm showing you this is because I've been looking for something that's been doing this that could do this for a long time. Now, in my stock portfolio, which this channel is not about, I always use Pies, right? Some of you, if you're in the US, maybe use M1. I use Trading212 and there's many other apps which allow you to do that. You can invest in Pies, which is where I can set up recurring purchases and say buy this much btc buy this this much cardano buy this much phantom every single week and i don't have to touch it up to now i had to do that manually but i noticed there's now a bt uh, a re recurring buy option within okx all you need to do is head over into okx click on trade and then when you head on over here you can choose recurring buy and it's really interesting because i can say okay bitcoin and then i want to say every week on a monday go ahead and buy me $1,000 of Bitcoin, right? And I can do that DCA, but here's the powerful bit. There's other apps which allow you to do that bit, but then I can do this. I can add a new crypto and then I can go ahead and choose Phantom, right? I can go and say, okay, and now do me some Phantom. So this is really cool, guys. And I'm, I'm definitely going to be using this a lot, lot more now that I've finally found this. I wish I knew this existed uh, a little while ago. Maybe it didn't exist. They've also got some other interesting bots as well in here, which I'm going to have a play around because they've got like a spot grid bot and they've got a futures grid and a recurring buy. Maybe I'll have a play around with these and report back to you guys my results. Let me know in the comments if that's something of interest, particularly the spot grid, which they're saying is about 500% APY. Well, maybe we can play around with that to see if that's actually true. Now, coming back into the charts, what are we seeing? Well, first of all, let's take a look at fear and greed index sitting at 30, okay? So we're still about at the same levels we are. Let's take a quick look at the markets because this week is going to be volatile. We need to pay respect to the markets. The markets are showing as a little bit flat to red today. If I just get that over, click on US. And as you can see, Dow Jones just slightly flat, S&P flat, and NASDAQ flat. This is going to be the calm before the storm, right? This is going to be a little bit of a tricky Monday before we really get started with some proper earnings tomorrow. FOMC on Wednesday with the interest rate decision, GDP on Thursday. It's going to be back to back to back, guys. And it's going to be really, really volatile. You need to stay up to date with what's going on. Now, what I want to show you is this. This is really going to be interesting for you guys. I'm going to switch over to weekly. These are weekly candles now. I'm just going to zoom in here. And what you guys are looking at is the white vertical lines are your FOMC meetings. Okay. And the green ones are your CPI results. So as you can see here, previously, if we go back to May, you had your May FOMC meeting, then you had your CPI a week later. And then in June, you had your CPI, then a week later, the FOMC. This one was slightly different in that we had our CPI two weekly candles gap before our FOMC meeting. Now look what's happened. Previously, we got our CPI, uh, we got our FOMC meeting, big red candle, CPI data, another big red candle. Same here, CPI, big red candle, FOMC, big red candle, right? But here's what we had. We had CPI, market kind of fell and then came back again. And then we rallied in the week gap. Normally we don't have this gap, right? Normally the FOMC comes straight after and plummets us to the downside. So now the question is, are we going to see that same big red candle like we saw previously on FOMC uh, on FOMC days? Are we going to see that start to play down now to the downside? That's what we need to ask ourselves is, is that volatility going to come in? Now, it's not just to do with FOMC. Whether we see a big red candle here today, uh, this week, is not just FOMC alone. Like I said, there's GDP and there's earnings baked in on top of that. So it's going to be a crazy week to see because maybe you get a you get a crazy FOMC meeting where he does uh, 100 basis points, but then you get a decent GDP figure, which means we're not in a recession, right? In which case, that nullifies the fact that we're going to get a big red candle because maybe the markets will rally that the, the economy is doing okay. So we need to take this based on the nuances of what's happening with the data. Now, another important thing to look at is if I just head on back over to uh, what I want to share with you here. Let's just zoom out. Uh, in fact, it's on this chart. Here we go. So what we're forming here on the hourly is our only bullish scenario that I can suggest. And the bullish scenario is that we get a bounce from the top of the channel. Remember the top of the channel I was showing you? Let's just show you that again. The green line is that top of the channel, which we're actually literally, as I'm recording, breaking into now. So it's not looking good. We're downtrending back into our channel. But if we can break out, what you are looking at is a bullish continuation pattern. So we will keep an eye out on this, but you want to see that if we break this to the downside, then our price target is going to tumble back into the channel, which I just showed you 
from that green horizontal line. So the bullish scenario is you've got to bounce back here. You've got to get out of this pattern and start working your way back up to 24,000, which is a potential uh, situation there. But at the moment, there's huge weakness in the charts going into a very difficult week. So for me, I think this is more likely to go and test back into uh, this channel here, okay? That's what I'm looking out for. Remember, the head and shoulders technical price target brings you down to 20,500. And that's the most likely scenario right now, given the current environment and crazy week we're in. Speaking of which, what else is moving the markets? Well, we know that what else moves the markets, particularly the crypto space, is the dollar index. And the dollar index moves inversely uh, to crypto. And what we've seen here is that dollar index did have a little bit of a calling down over the last week, which has allowed crypto to have that positive week, which it did have. Crypto had a green week, and that was partly because dollar index went for a calling off. But look at this on the daily EMA. All we're seeing was the dollar index just came back to its EMA ribbon. So now we need to say, okay, what is going to happen? Are we going to retrace deep into the EMA ribbon? Are you going to do this? Or are you just going to have this style? That's what we now need to watch out for. Because if it's the former, if this wants to retrace all the way down to 104 on the Dixie, then Bitcoin can have another good week. But no, but if dollar index wants to bounce this week now off the top of the EMA, then crypto is not going to manage a good week. Now, what moves the dollar index? Remember, this doesn't mean the dollar is getting stronger. This is dollar versus a basket of all the other currencies. But guess what? All the other currencies are doing even worse than Bitcoin, so, uh, than US dollar. So relatively, the US dollar is doing better than these other currencies, which is why we're seeing this crazy exponential almost growth into the dollar. Because when you're in a global slowdown, when you're fearing global recession, not just US recession, global recession, guess what? Third world countries and their currencies are plummeting on a daily basis. And for them, they will rotate to a dollar, which is uh, inflating at 9.1% per annum. And that feels like heaven to them. Okay, that is why we're seeing this rotation up. And guess what? If GDP plummets again, and if we get another FOMC, we could see a uh, bad reading from the FOMC. See, we could see this continue as markets continue therefore okay so we need to keep an eye out on this now what is the one saving grace in terms of the dollar cost averaging well the one saving grace is this which is that the wallets uh holding just over uh one bitcoin whoops just come back to that uh holding more than one bitcoin is starting to increase so you are seeing that the shrimps the small people are trying to accumulate and use this opportunity to really fill up their bags i think that is the great opportunity right now whether bitcoin's at eighteen thousand, whether it's at twenty two thousand. In the long run it's not going to make a difference if your thesis is that bitcoin's going to go to hundred thousand. so if you have that thesis you believe in the long-term vision and you understand where Bitcoin is going, then for you, you shouldn't get caught up in 18,000, 19,000, 20,500. Where's the bottom exactly? As long as you dollar cost average, average and huddle through this period, you're going to do well. And that's the reality behind what we need to be doing in this market. Yes, we can look at FOMC. Yes, we can look at uh, what's going on with GDP. But at the same time, we need to make sure we're getting into the market because that's the only way we're going to build wealth over the long term here in crypto. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe. I've got a gift for all you guys. There's a free fundamental analysis cheat guide in the description. Me and my team compiled this PDF guide, which you can print and they're all the top things I look for when analyzing a project. Completely free. Links in description. Get yourself downloaded on that. Uh, it's just a PDF. You can print it, put it on your desk and look for those things when you're analyzing a new project. Don't forget to check out OKX. That recurring buy looks really, really interesting. Definitely going to try that out a lot more. I'm so happy so happy that I finally found that. Go watch this video here, guys. Super important phantom video, which I outline exactly how many phantom you need to become a cryptocurrency millionaire. See you in the next one.